a good day. It is September 27th, which if I remember correctly, is the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. Ryan's shaking his head, so I guess it is. Uh, some announcements. Uh, after this service at 10 o'clock, and coffee hour in adult formation. It starts at 10 to 10.45, and then children and youth will follow <clears throat> from 10.45 to 11.45. We're using the Church Next curriculum that went out for virtual learning. It's, it's really kind of good. I really like it. Uh, so if you haven't, you can sign up for Church Next, which the link is in our e-news. You can take a look at that and follow along. And if you haven't signed up, you can still join us because there are good questions uh, that it suggests that we can talk about. Uh, tonight, very excited. Uh, Compton in the Grass at 7. Uh, it's Janelle's turn to lead, so she'll be leading that. And then immediately following Compton in the Grass, we have Good Shepherd Family Feud. Uh, which should be fun. Some of the questions are very interesting. Um, and, and it should be a great little time. So come out, bring a chair if you like, or a blanket if you want to sit on the ground. Bring a chair, bring a blanket, bring some snacks if you want to have some snacks. Bring a beverage if you want to have a beverage. Uh, bring a mask. Wherever my mask went, bring a mask. Uh, and, you know, if you can stay six, ten feet away from somebody, you can take your mask off, of course. Um, but bring that mask with you. And we'll have masks available in case you forget. And we'll have some hand sanitizer as well set up so you can use that. Tomorrow, Monday, beverage of your choice in Bible study at 6. The Zoom link was in the e-news on Thursday, so take a look at that. It's a lot of fun. You get to see, actually see your, your fellow parishioners and discuss the Bible stories coming up for the following week. And also it's on Facebook Live, so if you don't want to interact, you can just watch it. Uh, and then also tomorrow, Laundry Love, 6.30, uh, at Soaps and Suds Ward's Corner. It's a great ministry. Janelle will be there, uh, and she hopes that you can join her. If you have any questions, you can email her, and her email should be in the e-news as well. So that's about it. Let us begin our service, the season after Pentecost liturgy. <clears throat> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the glory of what you will find in your liturgy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Exodus, chapter 16, verses 2 through 15. The whole congregation of Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, where we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of God, 
because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard your complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there was on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as the frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 105, found on page 738 of the Book of Common Prayer. Chapter 105, verses 1 through 6 and 37 through 45. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name, that the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham and his servant, O children of Jacob his chosen. He led out his people with silver and gold. In all their tribes there was not one that stumbled. Egypt was glad of their going, because they were afraid of them. He spread out a cloud for a covering, and a fire to give light in the night season. They asked, and the quails appeared, and he satisfied them with bread from heaven. He opened the rock, and water flowed so that the river ran in dry places. For God remembered his holy word, and Abraham his servant. So he led forth his people with gladness, his chosen with shouts of joy. He gave his people the lands of the nations, and they took the fruit of others' toil, that they may be, might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Alleluia. A reading from Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make, jo make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord of one mind. Do nothing selfish ambition or conceit, be, but in human humanity regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the, same mind, let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who, though he was not in the form of God, did, did not record, re, regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being in form of human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee shall bend, and in heaven and in earth and under the earth, every tongue can confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not in my presence, but in much more now in my absence. Work out for your own salvation in fear of trembling, for it is God who is at work with you, enabling you both, and will work to, for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. When Jesus entered the temple, 
the chief priest and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. And if you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I did these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven? Or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not, but later changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Janelle, uh, Faith, and I watched a movie on Netflix last night called Enola Holmes. Uh, it's about the younger sister of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, it's based on a young adult novel. I think I enjoyed it more than Janelle and Faith did, but I, I really enjoyed it. I really liked it. Uh, it has Millie Bobby Brown as uh, the young lady from Stranger Things is, plays Enola Holmes, and Henry Cavill, who most of us know as Superman, uh, plays Sherlock Holmes in a I'm told by the internet that he's dreamy as Sherlock Holmes, and he's a good-looking guy, so I can see that. But it, it's a and I'll, mild spoilers ahead. Let me let me just say that right up front. So if you don't want to hear it, just close your ears. If you want to watch this movie, mild spoilers. Um, it's basically Ben's telling me to be quiet. Uh, it's basically Enola Holmes. She's 16. And, and her mother disappears overnight. Her mother disappears. And her brothers, Sherlock and Mycroft Holmes, Mycroft is the oldest of the three children, come and they, the brothers decide that she needs to be turned into a young lady. They want to send her off to a finishing school. Uh, and they have a authority over her. They have power over her because of the society. This is Victorian England where women did not have the right to vote. They did not have not a whole lot of rights. They had to listen. They, their job as young women in polite society was to, to get married, have children, embroider, uh, do all that kinds of stuff. Uh, and Enola does not want any of that. Uh, so she rejects their authority and has, a, has an adventure. Uh, and I'm not going to try not to give anything away, not too much away. Like I said, mild spoilers. But it's that idea of authority. Who has authority over you? Or power over you? Because the Greek in our gospel lesson is ex, exousia. Exu, exousia. Exousia is how it's pronounced. Exousia. Which can be translated as authority, power, or the power of authority. So who has authority? Who has power? That's the question in Enola Holmes, and she rejects the power that male society wants to, to thrust upon her, wants to dominate her with. She rejects that, that power. And there's a little subplot about uh, a reform bill going from parliament and votes for people who are, who are uneducated and poor. Because it used to be in England, you voted for parliament, only people who were rich and had money and had, had land could vote. Uh, of course, it was that way at the beginning of our country as well. So she rejects that authority and finds her own power, her own authority. 
that's what this gospel lesson is about. It's about authority. It's about power. And the, the temple authorities, the temple elders and the, and, the, and the priests, the chief priests, asked Jesus, by what power are you doing these things? And who gave you this power? Now, why they're not just kicking him out, that's a little backstory we need to understand. Do you remember the Occupy Wall Street movement? Uh, probably five, six, seven years ago. Um, we had these groups of people who represented the 1%, Occupy Wall Street, to protest against, I mean, the 99% protest against the 1%, who had most of the wealth, the majority of wealth in our country. They Occupy Wall Street. Jesus is occupying the temple. Right before this gospel passage, he enters into Jerusalem in triumph on the back of a donkey. And the crowds are going wild, Hosanna in the highest, yay, Jesus, Jesus. And he goes to the temple, and he overturns the tables of the moneylenders and drives them out. He occupies the temple. And the chief priests and the elders can't kick him out because they're afraid of the crowd. So they challenge him with this question. By what power are you doing these things, and who gave you this power? They're trying to trip him up. They're trying to, to force him out of the temple. This is a, a zero-sum equation right here. Somebody wins, and somebody loses. And if Jesus loses, Jesus loses, he loses his occupation of the temple. But Jesus wins. Jesus doesn't leave until Jesus wants to leave. So he's asking them about power as well. He's challenging their power in this gospel passage. He's challenging what power they have and where they derive it from. I mean, Jesus derives his power from God. The chief priests and the elders who were landed, who had money, who are those people who Jesus often preaches against in Matthew's gospel. They're backed up by the Roman Empire. They're backed up by an occupying force. They're the Vichy government in France, as it were. So he's challenging that world, worldly authority with God's power. And the difference between those two powers, which we don't see in this gospel particularly, but we see it in this gospel passage, what we see it throughout Matthew's gospel, is that Jesus' power, the power given to him by his Father, produces healing and forgiveness and love. The power that the elders and the chief priests, and especially the Romans, have produces alienation and violence. That's the difference. Jesus' power is about love, and the worldly power of Rome is about death and violence. So Jesus is putting the power of love against the power of empire. And he wins. I mean, he's crucified. But that's winning. Because he, he rises again. When you believe, and Jesus talks about belief in here as well. You know, for John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. To believe entails making a decision about what kind of power is legitimate. The tax collectors and the prostitutes believe. And they decide that the power of God is legitimate. Not the power of Rome. Not the power of the chief priests and the elders. The chief priests and the elders saw that the tax collectors and prostitutes believed. But they don't take the step to change their mind. They don't take the step to repent. That's what changing your mind is. What kind of power is legitimate? We as Christians believe that God's power is legitimate. 
in all the things that flow from God's power. Love, forgiveness. What kind of power do we have in our world? Is it love? Is it forgiveness? Is it healing? Some power it is. And I would submit that that power, when we act like that, when we heal, when we love, when we forgive, we are tapping into the power that God gives us. Either our, our leaders or ourselves as individuals. It's a big year this year. We have COVID. Got a pandemic going on. We've got murder hornets coming in. I read a report just uh, a few days ago that said that uh, vampire bats are expanding their range probably into southern Texas and, and Florida, which they're not harmful to people usually, so I wouldn't worry about that. But it just seems like 2020 just keeps happening. We had Hurricane Sally just recently. It's a big year. Of course, I didn't mention, you know, probably the biggest thing that's happening right now is an election. We have an election coming up, November 3rd. Uh, not just for president, but for, I'm sure, senators are up. Mark Warner is up for re-election in our state. House of Representatives, governors, there's, there's laws to be made, laws to pass, referendums in our, in our own city about a casino. All of those things. And as Christians, we have to ask ourselves, what kind of power are we going to vote for? We have to ask ourselves, will we vote for love? Will we vote for healing? Will we vote for forgiveness? Because that's what we're called to do as Christians. Or will we vote for hate, and alienation, and violence? Now, I can't tell you how to vote. I'm not going to tell you how to vote. But we have to vote for the kingdom of God. As Christians, I believe we should vote for the kingdom of God. We should vote for love. We should vote for healing. We should vote for uh, equality. Because that's what we see in the gospel lessons. We see all people being the same under God's guidance. Even though we're all different, God loves us all. So when you vote, November 3rd or early, if you want to do mail-in ballot, and if you do, do it early so it has time to get there. I had a piece of mail in my mailbox two days, and the postman didn't pick it up. It means I'll have to go drop it off today on my way home. When we vote, vote for God. Whatever that means to you, whoever you think best represents love and healing and forgiveness and equality and justice and righteousness, that's our call. And as we see at the end of this gospel passage, it's not about what you say, it's about what you do. For us, it's about what we do. Actions versus words. And we need to apply that ruler, that yardstick, to those we're voting for. How do they act? Do they act in love? Do they act in healing? Do they act in forgiveness? Do they act in justice and equality and righteousness? Or do they act to further the world's power of hate and alienation and violence and death. Jesus is telling us that we have to choose what kind of power we believe in. And as Christians, we must believe in the power of God, in the power of love.
watching Noah home. It's really good. And when the time comes, vote for the kingdom of God. Amen. Turn in, in your liturgy the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, Forum 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we may all be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly humb and humbly serve you, that, that your name be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority to the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our, that our, word, that our works may favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from grief and trouble, that they may be delivered from your distress. Give, give to the... Give to the departed eternal rest. Let, let light perpetual shine upon them. We, pray, we praise you for your saints who have returned into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and the, those of others. Your prayers are requested for the following parishioners. Lois, Lloyd, Mac, Marsha, Sarah, Cecilia, Ann, Sally, Michelle, Bob, Trey, Patsy, and Betty. For our families and friends, Mary, Ian, Samuel, Judy, Brian, Rosa, Robert, Bill, Paige, Fisha, Debbie, Rob, Jamie, Paige, Barbara, Nona, Indy, Angela, Tatiana, Fatima, Elizabeth, Abby, and her family, and Chris and Max Smith. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant to us effectually, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Turning in your liturgy, let us confess our sins against God, our neighbors, and ourselves. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. We believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since we cannot at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all our hearts, our souls, and our minds. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until, by your grace, we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. And now in the words our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in our hearts in the fullness of your strength. Be our wisdom, and guide us in right pathways. Conform our lives and actions to the image of your holiness, and in the power of your gracious might. Rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you. And remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.